Good morning. I'm going to take you on a quick uh, tour of the campsite. That is the Colorado River. Those are the Vermilion Cliffs. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty nice. Good morning friends, family, total strangers. Uh, today's video uh, is just about uh, van life. Uh, after I did my, uh, my hike, my foot was kind of bothering me, so I decided to take a, a little uh, time off of hiking and let it heal up. So uh, I haven't really done any hikes um, since uh, Aravipa Canyon. So uh, I just thought I'd do this video on, I filmed various camps that I've camped at uh, both before uh, the Aravipa Canyon and after. So I just thought I'd, uh, I'd show them off. So uh, yeah, this video is mostly just going to be showing some different camps that I've had and uh, cooking I've done. And uh... So after I left the Sandhill Cranes, I went up into the Chiricahua Mountains uh, I think it was West Turkey Creek, and uh, I stayed there exactly one night because uh, it was cold. <laughs> and then as I was sitting around the next morning and it was cold, it's like, you know what? Yeah, it was nice being up in the pines for a day uh, and being on a little creek, but uh, yeah, it was just too cold, so I headed down. So I will show you that camp super quick. There's only like uh, three shots. <laughs> So yeah, I mean it was it was nice. It was just it was just a little too cold up there uh, the time of year I was there. So that was February sometime. <laughs> so um, my next camp, I went to one of my kind of favorite favorite ones actually. It's in the Dragoon Mountains. Uh, it's near Kochi Stronghold on FreeCampsites.net. I think it is labeled as West Hunt Road. And uh, I had a couple of different camps there because uh, I went into town and lost my campsite. So, um, but yeah, I, uh, it was that was pretty sweet. So let me show you around there. You're kind of camped out in the oaks, and yeah, it's it's nice. Um, so camp number three um, is another one of my favorites. It's uh, Indian Bread Rocks. It actually, the mountains look pretty similar to the uh, Dragoon Mountains, the Kochi Stronghold area, uh, but there's no, there's not really any trees. <laughs> but it's really convenient. It's right off of the freeway. It's only like, yeah, 10 minutes from the freeway. So it's a, a great stopover if you're coming from New Mexico or going to New Mexico. Uh, yeah, Indian Bread Rocks. And I camped there before uh, I went to Aravipa Canyon, and then I camped there for another day or two after uh, Aravipa Canyon. This is the first campsite that actually had Wi-Fi or a cell phone signal. So the Verizon, that was, that was nice to have uh, a cell phone signal. So 
yeah, let me uh, catch you that footage. I'm doing something a little different this morning. I'm making caramelized French toast. So this is just egg, cinnamon, uh, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of water and a little bit of uh, vanilla, and then uh, white sugar. So the the idea is is that instead of adding syrup, you add sugar right to the uh, egg batter, and then when you cook it up, it caramelizes on the French toast, and yeah, it's delicious. I'll show you that in a second. And there it is, delicious. So again, you don't add syrup to this; it's already sweetened. So. And the sugar is caramelized on there, so yeah, it's uh, pretty good. So the next camp uh, that I stayed at was another one of my favorites. Uh, the Peralta, it's near the Peralta Trailhead. Uh, it's not free camping. You have to have a Arizona State Land Trust uh, permit, which costs like $15 for the year. Uh, or if you get a, a multiple person pass, it's $20 for the year. It's low elevation and there's a great cell signal there. So I spent um, I spent a lot of time mostly just kind of sitting around since I'm not hiking, practicing the banjo, lots of banjo practice, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was great. So let me uh, cut you to that footage. This is near Peralta Trailhead um, in the superstitions. Couple of fried eggs all dressed up. Yum. Some gnocchi cooked up with garlic and uh, mixed with some um, olive oil and uh, tomatoes and fresh basil. A little Parmesan. Looks delicious. There's the final stir fry. And there's the final product, a little chicken vegetable stir fry. Uh, just a quick note. Um, ideally, you would have a pan about twice that big, picking, cooking about half the amount of ingredients I was cooking. <laughs> so what I was doing is what is called crowding the pan. And what that means is, is that all the moisture that comes off of all these different ingredients creates essentially like a stew at the bottom. So instead of getting like a good crisp stir fry, you end up with more of a vegetable stew. And it'll taste fine, this, this will taste good, but this would be so much better if I had a bigger pan and less ingredients in it to get like a good stir fry. So if you are at, how, at a home, try not to crowd the pan. If you're in a van, you just gotta do whatever you can do. <laughs> a spinach laden uh, breakfast burrito <laughs> gotta get your veggies hanging out with the cows <laughs> here's two slices of bacon that I just cut up on the packaging so as to not make a mess on my cutting board <laughs> I'm doing these extreme close-ups on the food because um, my back door is broken, so I have to cook out of my side door, and my van's a mess. So, hence, food zoom. <laughs> and I'll also be adding some cumin and salt and pepper, of course. And there's dinner, a little bean and rice burrito. Looks delicious.
so yeah i stayed there for uh a week i stayed there for a week and it was great um it was kind of fun not uh you know just kind of settled in one spot for a while and focusing on playing banjo and yeah it was uh i enjoyed i enjoyed that uh that week there it was nice um on the day i left it was super windy and i had to do a grocery run and once i was doing it, it's like you know what i might as well just uh just keep moving <laughs> so i drove to sedona arizona and camped for a night and uh i will show you some footage uh from there i just got like three shots <laughs> But uh, I will show you some footage from my camp in Sedona. So Sedona is beautiful, but man, you know, there's really there's one main area that you can camp near Sedona, uh, Road 525, which is where I was, uh, Forest Service Route 525. And it, it, there's just so many people out there. And there's ATVs going down the road all day long. And there's pink Jeep tours going down the road all day long. And most of the camping is fairly close to the road. And so it's beautiful, but just with all the people and all that, yeah, you know, it was super full. So I ended up at, yeah, not the flattest, best campsite. <laughs> and uh, I had, had no cell signal, so I had planned on camping there for a few days, but you know, after one night, I was just like, you know what? I just don't want to be around all these crowds right now. I just wasn't in the mood. I want to be somewhere where I can just practice my banjo without bothering people. And uh, yeah, just not, I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't want to deal with Sedona, so uh, I packed up and uh, came here. So I am currently near Page, uh, Arizona. I will talk about this uh, camp in my next uh, video, uh, and I'll probably end up doing, uh, I think my foot's doing good, so I might do a couple hikes around here. But uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty nice, pretty nice camping out here, and there's almost nobody. There's one guy camped down the road just a little ways and other than that, yeah, there's nobody out here. So, And it's a little lower elevation than Sedona, similar temperatures, and every bit as beautiful as Sedona and there's no freaking crowds of people and ATVs. So, yeah, much better. <laughs> so, uh, that's uh, pretty much my video, so thanks for watching. Uh, Please like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, I decided to name this video, um, since I've had uh, numerous suggestions that if I'd get more views if I uh, titled my videos with hashtag van life. So uh, I, uh, I decided to do that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thanks for watching.